Welcome back. This time we're going to build a burner for the forge. So I'm going to walk you through my steps of putting this together. And I'm basing this off of Frosty's plans. It's a Frosty Tea Burner is what it's known as. So if you do a search for that, I'll put a link in the description too. Frosty is the handle of a guy that's from Alaska and he builds these forge burners and has been for a long time. So I'm going to pretty much follow his plans, but I had to make some modifications based on what was available to me. These burners are known as Venturi burners, these atmospheric burners and they are based on the Bernoulli principle. The Bernoulli principle says that a moving stream of fluid causes lower pressure. And so what this does is the Venturi effect then talks about constricting airflow through a smaller diameter uh, pipe. And so if, if any kind of fluid is going through a smaller diameter, then what happens is it speeds up that, that airflow and that faster moving fluid, according to Bernoulli's principle, creates a lower pressure. All right, here's everything you're going to need for this burner to put it together. You're going to need a high pressure regulator. This one goes up to 20 pounds, or you can get one that goes up to 30 pounds. This hose is 3 8 flare fitting, and you've got to figure out a way to go from flare fitting to the rest of your piping, and I'm going to be going down and reducing it to a quarter inch. So I have 3 8 flare here, and then I'm going to be hooking that up with a 3 8 bushing that goes to the 3 8 pipe threads, then reducing it down to quarter inch pipe threads. This regulator I got off Amazon. I'll put links in the description to some of the parts that I had to order online. For these pipes, it doesn't really matter how long they are over here. You could actually hook this up in a shorter run if you wanted to, to the burner. But this is so that I have this stuff uh, away from the forge a little bit. It gives me a little bit of distance and I have room for some of the, you know, like the pressure gauge and the needle valve. So this is a, a nipple. This one's six inches long. And then I have this needle valve. I'll put a link in the description for that. Then I have just an emergency shutoff valve, another nipple, this is a like six inch. From here, I'm going from a quarter inch 90 pipe threads. Here's pipe threads. Now this is going to quarter inch flare. Then I'm going to this coupler here between this flare fitting and this. This piece here is quarter inch flare to eighth inch pipe threads. And what you're going to need is you're going to need to tap the T. This is a one inch to three quarter inch T. It's one inch on both sides and three quarter inch here. You're going to need a tap to tap that eighth inch pipe threads. So it would look like this. This is eighth inch by 27 NPT. Luckily my neighbor had that. I didn't have to buy that. So I'm going to tap that. And then inside here, you're going to use a MIG tip and this is 0 0.035 diameter and to tap that so that it can screw in here you're going to need a quarter by 28 tap so you're going to tap threads here so that you can screw in one of these MIG tips you're going to need a three quarter inch nipple either six inch or eight inch it's going to screw in here and then at the end what I'm using is a stainless steel reducer from three quarter inch to one inch I ordered this also on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for that. But that's going to be my burner nozzle that'll be in the forge. To make sure that this hole that you drill and then tap is completely centered so that the MIG contact tip is directly in the center of this tube, pushing that propane directly in the center, what Frosty recommends is that you get this flange and a close nipple here and you set it up like this. So when you put it on the drill press, you have a way to keep it completely square, assuming that your table for your drill press is square. That way, you're not going to be moving it left or right and be off. It should be able to drill and tap that exactly in the center. One last thing you're going to need is propane rated tape, just to make it a little bit easier to get those pieces together. Gives it a little bit of lubrication. Doesn't really necessarily seal it but it helps to lubricate the threads a little bit, and this is rated for propane use. I'm gonna use the calipers to find the center here, take the overall dimension, and I'm gonna cut it in half. So I center punched exactly in the center here, so that's where we're going to drill and tap. I need to clamp this down. I'm going to use one of these cheap 6-inch Harbor Freight wood clamps, and what I did is I took a grinding wheel and I shaved off that little nub at the end so that I can take this completely off. 
and then you can feed it through your table. Have that clamped down. Now it can be assured that this is going to go exactly square. It's not going to be off left or right or anything like that. This 1 8 by 27 tap takes a 21 64th drill bit. It doesn't hurt to do a pilot hole, so that's what I'm going to do here since I already have this bit set up. Now's the most critical part. I gotta make sure that I tap these threads completely straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the chuck, but I'm gonna retract the chuck enough that I can grab around the cylinder outside diameter because this is a three jaw chuck and this has four sides. It's not gonna square up if I don't put it all the way in there. So I'm gonna put it all the way up there and then grab it and I'll just quick turn it on, make sure it's centered. It's nice and centered. So now I can bring this up and get it lined up just the way we want it. I'm going to slowly lower this and turn it by hand to get it started, applying downward pressure and turning it and backing it out. You can use some cutting fluid if you want. Never a bad idea. You can hear Laurel up there playing some piano. It's getting pretty good. One thing that I'll mention is that this eighth inch tap is tapered. So is the fitting. That's going to be good. Last step is going to be to tap the threads to accept the MIG contact tip in here. And that's going to be with a quarter inch by 28 tap. And I don't have to drill this beforehand because it's so close to being the right size. It only really needs to cut a little bit out. You gotta test these fittings. Each fitting's a little different at what that inside diameter is and make sure it's not too big. This one is just the right size. If the inside diameter was any larger, it wouldn't work. So let's see how that is so far. Ideally, I want to have this end about halfway down that pipe, and that usually improves it, but that's part of the tuning of this. You have to experiment with how it's burning. I could just do it like this and see how it burns and then adjust it, which is what I think I'm going to do. Instead of cutting it off, I'll see how this one burns like this. They're all going to be a little bit different. You can also put a flap on here to control the air on either side. Here's the whole setup put together, and I'm out of my garage now where I have my forge. This is a forge that I built a little while ago that I've been using off and on for the past year, and now I finally got it tuned in and it's working really nice, especially with this T-burner. So click on here and I'll show you a link of uh, a video on how I built this forge. But I've actually built two of these setups so far, one for my dad's forge and one for this forge. So for this forge, I already welded on a bell reducer here to the top of my forge, so I didn't need to use that stainless steel bell reducer that I showed you that was in the layout. That one I actually used for my dad's forge and here's some footage of that forge. You can see it in action and I had to use slightly different pieces than what I showed you in the layout from that but basically the same setup and use the same style burner. I'm going to bring you in a little closer here next and I'm going to show you this in more detail and talk to you about how I fire this forge up. Okay you can see it's all put together here and you can see I use the yellow propane rated tape 
to put all of those different joints together. Uh, the only other thing that I'll mention here is I have this bracket here that helps support this cantilevered section as I have the pipe hanging off here. That way it's a nice solid connection. I just use a pipe clamp here and I welded this down here onto the side of my forge. That really helps reduce the stress that would be right on that small piece of copper piping right there that goes in between this union right here. It's getting kind of late to fire this up tonight. I think what we'll do is take a break, fire it up tomorrow and show you the sequence and show you how it burns. So for this setup, I'm gonna turn the tank on first. I'm gonna open that up. And I'm basically gonna open up the valves from the tank to the burner. So I have this one, then I'm gonna do the high pressure valve. That opens in the opposite direction. And then what I do is I open that until I read my gauge and I can tell how much pressure I have. I'll show you that. So I'm gonna open this up until I'm showing some pressure. And I usually like to have somewhere around about five on the gauge to start it up, fire it up. So now I know I have pressure there. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'll open up this needle valve. I'll be ready with my propane torch to light the forge. And when I hear the gas flowing, that's when I'm gonna light it. That's how you put together one of these frosty tea burners. I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, put them in the section below. And until next time, I'll see you later.